How's it going guys? This is Eric with Deranged Survival and today I'm going to show you some of my camping spots in this area that I go to pretty frequently. So stay tuned. So as you can see behind me I've camped here before. This was actually the first time I camped in the winter uh, solo. I used my tent for the occasion. Uh, one time I came here I tried to set up a teepee and it was not successful at all but I still have the power cord here and this was the frame and the structure of it. it's pretty solid I dug all three corners into the ground but it wasn't a successful mission <laughs> so this was where the campfire was right here as you can see there's some burnt logs and I made a lazy man bench just got a bunch of logs um, laid them horizontal and vertical till I got my desired height and I just stuck a log in the back to keep the log on the top from rolling over and I had a nice natural made fire reflector right there. So as you can see this area is nice and level as opposed to the area around me. As you can see there's a lot of hills and uh, one thing that happened one time when I, that I was camping here uh, it started to rain and all the water collected right underneath me. So I've only used this spot uh, two or three times. One was in the winter, a couple times it was in the summer and the third time it rained and my entire campsite was flooded so I don't use this site anymore <laughs> but this is one of my campsites so I learned my lesson to choose my campsites wisely uh, this is there's hills all around me so there's a good chance that the water is going to collect on this flat surface that I'm at right now so I learned my lesson that way and uh, let's move on to another campsite so here's another one of my campsites uh, as you can see I tried to construct some type of shelter but it was a huge failure <laughs> um, I actually did my subscriber challenge here uh, the challenge was to uh, build a bow drill set um, on the day that I go into the woods and get a fire going and build a, a natural shelter without using any rope and uh, this is what I constructed unfortunately I didn't pass both of those challenges but this is uh, one area I do a lot of camping uh, I actually made my most popular video here uh, insulating your tent for winter I believe is the name of it and uh, let me show you a 360 view of the area so here's the campsite here as you can see I tried to build a shelter over here I had a fire over there and again natural heat reflector uh, I camped here in the winter a couple times made a nice lazy man bench just stuck a log up and braced it up with other logs uh, there was some of my bow drill material that I was using so it's the basic shelter build up and uh, what I have in my hand here is a piece of cumbalanite a cumbalanite is a rare earth metal it's actually only found in this area in Cumberland, Rhode Island where I'm at right now uh, I think I read up about it, it said, yeah, I don't know, two million years ago or something like that a comet hit or something from space hit and uh, created the lake that's over here I'll show you guys when we leave Uh, let's head on to my next campsite. So this is one of my favorite camping spots. I actually uh, recently just made a video about this spot, uh, so I'm not going to show you much, but I made a lazy man bench. This is where we have our fire, and I've got a huge fire reflector. And um, I'll put a link in this video to my other video, so check that out when you get a chance. So it's time to cook some lunch. I got some uh, large sub rolls here and some steak. Yum. So I get this fire going. Collected a bunch of small sticks. I'm sure you guys are capable of starting a decent fire now. But one thing I like to do when creating a fire is I like to brace it up off the ground. As you can see, this log right here in the back and I have this stick here bracing up everything off the ground. This way it allows oxygen to come out, to come from underneath and fuel the fire. That's the one problem a lot of people have with starting a fire is oxygen flow. Now even if these sticks were a little bit wet, they, they would still stay lit because there's enough oxygen flow. If you smother the fire, as you can see, there's barely any smoke now. Look how high the flame is. And I just have small sticks here. So, got the steak going. Once it's ready to flip, I shall flip it. So there's something that I've always wondered when I'm sitting here watching a campfire. What that is, is why does smoke follow you? And I came up with a theory. Uh, the theory is it basically follows heat. 
So if you're the hottest thing that is in the area, it's going to be attracted to you. Now, when I, I noticed when it's up against this rock, the rock gets really hot and all the smoke just follows the rock all the way right up. But I noticed once I get close to the fire, if it's not windy, the smoke starts to follow me as well. So I don't know. It's just a, a theory I came up with. Uh, if you guys have any idea or, or any theories of your own, please let me know. Comment below. So the steak's all done. I actually cooked it longer than I like. I like it nice and bloody, but it's good enough. Cows are still going a little bit longer. Sorry, cow. And uh, I'm going to head out of here, and I'll show you guys the lake before I head out. Sorry, cow. It's almost done. So I want to say thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all the views, comments, and support. Don't forget to subscribe to catch my future adventures, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah!